Hello, today I thought I would show you how to use an EEPROM eraser. This is an interesting piece of equipment that unless you work on vintage electronics, you may never have the opportunity to use. First of all, an EEPROM is a type of non-volatile memory, meaning that you can program this chip and even after the power is removed from the circuit, this chip retains its programming. The acronym EEPROM stands for Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. So this memory chip is not like the dynamic RAM that's in your computer or like a flash drive that you might use to store files. This special type of chip is programmed by a special device called an EEPROM programmer and after it's programmed it can only be read. You can't write to it again until you erase it. And unlike modern memory you can't erase this chip in circuit. You have to erase it with a special machine called an EEPROM eraser. Um, EEPROMs aren't used in modern electronics at all, as far as I am aware. I don't believe that EEPROMs are still in production. So this is something that you would only use if you work with vintage electronics. Uh, some old computers use EEPROMs. A lot of uh, standalone devices use EEPROMs, and even some automobiles. If you take a late 80s to early 90s automobile, most likely that auto has an engine control module, also known as the car's computer, and inside that is an EEPROM. These EEPROMs could store anything that that device needs to use. It stores the basic programming or the basic information that the computer needs to use to perform its function. So in an automobile, it might contain the basic information that the car's computer needs to use, to properly adjust the air-fuel mixture, to properly control the car's components, the car's equipment. Or in a computer, this chip might contain the computer's BIOS, the basic input-output system. The reason that they are erasable and reusable is if this chip has to be updated, so let's say that a new version of a computer's BIOS comes out, this chip can be removed, erased, reprogrammed, and reinstalled in the circuit. Modern electronics don't use these chips because modern chips called EEPROMs are electronic erasable programmable read-only memory. So EEPROMs or also flash ROMs can be written to and erased uh, many many times right in circuit. There's no need to take the chip out of the circuit and erase it outside of the device that it's used in. So let's just take a quick look at how to use an EEPROM eraser. EEPROMs are always identifiable by this window that's in the top of the chip. That's a special quartz window that allows ultraviolet light to pass into the chip. So that's the quick way to identify an EEPROM by that quartz window. EEPROMs are available by themselves. These are examples of uh, 27128 EEPROMs, but also there's some microcontrollers that have an EEPROM built in for storage. So this is an EEPROM eraser. There's many different styles and, and types on the market. This has a timer built in and a control for the light and a drawer down here. This is as simple as taking the EEPROMs and placing them in the drawer, setting the appropriate time, and turning the lamp on. Normally this drawer will have some kind of conductive foam, anti-static conductive foam like this. Uh, this it's fallen out of this drawer, but we're going to place them right here in the drawer. So you just take the chips that you want to erase, place them in the eraser like this, and set the time. So how do you know how much time to erase the chips for? Ideally, you would look at manufacturer's data sheets and the instruction manual for your EEPROM eraser and see what its suggestion is for the chips that you're using. But most likely in this day and age, you're, you'll be using used EEPROMs and probably even a used EEPROM eraser. So good documentation is just as, it's very hard to get a hold of. So the other method you can use to determine how long to erase a chip is to do an experiment. Take a blank chip, program it with any kind of data, doesn't matter what it is, and erase it for a short period of time, say five minutes, and then read the chip. And you keep erasing it for five additional minutes until the chip is blank. But then you take that total time and you multiply it by three. So let's say that after 10 minutes, your chip read blank. 
you want to erase those chips in the future for a total of 30 minutes. So you can take that chip, put it back in, erase it 20 more minutes, just to be sure that it's completely blank. And that's how you determine the time that you erase your chips. That time is different for different erasers and for different makes and models of chips. So it's important to do that experiment for each type of chip that you plan to use. So in this case, I determined that 25 minutes is the appropriate time for these chips. With this eraser, I'll set it for 25 minutes. I'll hold the on button momentarily and let go of it to start the fluorescent light. Inside of this eraser is a special ultraviolet emitting fluorescent tube. It's a clear tube with special glass that allows the UV light to pass through the tube and erase the chips. As the note says on top of the eraser, that UV light can burn your skin and hurt your eyes. So you want to make sure that the eraser completely contains the UV light. Any properly built, well-maintained eraser will be safe to operate because, it, because there, are, there are no leaks in this eraser. Also with this one, if you open the drawer, it has an interlock that will turn off the UV light for safety. On the front of the eraser, this has an indicator. That's just a clear plastic window that allows you to see that the fluorescent light inside is on. The light coming through this window is not harmful. The plastic absorbs the UV rays and just passes the visible rays. So once the timer shuts off, the EEPROMs are done. These chips are erased and ready to program. And the best part about erasing EEPROMs is getting to enjoy that wonderful, freshly erased EEPROM aroma.